Uh, Jim Casperson is a name I'd like to say in this space, um, right here in this space. Jim is um, someone, uh, together with his wife Marino, who were um, camp directors at Family Camp before Dan and Carla, and who were responsible for many of us, um, uh, or some of us anyway, um, on camp staff now. Jim is also someone who um, brought us together, um, and the, the uh, After Dark tradition was, was, was part of his um, vision for what, what camp could be. And the first couple of family camps that, uh, that we attended, and the After Dark we went to, was attended by a gentleman by the name of Jim Colley, who um, helped me appreciate um, the power of the spoken word in, in a setting like this. And so it, it kind of gave me the courage to speak rather than hide behind a guitar. Not that people were hiding behind guitars, so I said that long. But, uh, okay, that I would hide behind guitars. Um, and so, um, so this is kind of uh, an essay, uh, I like to read an essay um, when, when we do this, um, uh, kind of for uh, Jim Casperson and, and, um, and Mr. Colley. Um, I write a regular column for the uh, Alternative News Weekly in Madison called Isthmus, it, and, and my column is called Close to Home. This particular story has its roots in Family Camp 2. At the Square Circle last year, I uh, uh, predicted I was going to turn 50, and that I needed to cope with my midlife crisis by uh, getting a banjo from my family. Peggy wasn't there when I announced that. And so the whole rest of the camp said, so you're going to get Andy a banjo for his birthday, huh? And that was news for her. And, um, but she made the mistake of getting it. And, uh, <laughs> Along with Peter and Megan, remember? That's, that's, they were there. They witnessed it. No, they gave it to you as well. Oh, oh and, and Peter and Megan chipped in. That's, uh, that's right. And so our neighborhood um, has your address. And, uh, <laughs> um, also, um, our good friend John over there has uh, been telling me that he's interested in playing the banjo. And, um, and so this is for him, too. Uh, this is what the future portends. This is called Five Strength, One, Fra One Frazzled Family. <laughs> the banjo was America's only indigenous musical instrument. As such, you'd think it'd get more respect. Instead, the five string and those who play it are targets of derision, the butt of corny jokes. Did you hear the one about the definition of perfect pitch? When the banjo lands in the dumpster without hitting any of the four sides. <laughs> As with most cliches, there's a kernel of truth inside the banjo's cursed reputation. Learning the banjo is a cross between a full-time job and water to waterboard torture. And that's just for the people who live with the beginner. Happy birthday, Banjo Me, says my wife Peggy, when she and the kids hand me the big box, oblivious to the trouble it contains. It's a brand new, daring, good time open bag. The exact kind I want. <coughs> In a brilliant act of design, the words good time are burned into the pegboard for the inevitable times when the person playing it has to be reminded. <laughs> the beginning of banjo is an instrument in absence at the crossroads, the corner of Struggs and Stanley. One road leads to the Earl Struggs three-finger picking style, the technique best known for flame-throwing notes in bluegrass music. The other path leads to the older form. The grandfather of Struggs style is called claw hammer, just as tricky to learn, popularized by Ralph Stanley and his old-time mountain banjo. This is the technique I'm learning. The day after my birthday, I say farewell to my family, grab my banjo, and descend into the basement. You learn the banjo one hand at a time, and getting the picking hand down first is the only way to master claw hammer. Two weeks pass before I even put my left hand on the neck. In the meantime, I turn on Ken Burns' The War series. Dial the sound way down and claw my way through WW2. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing how to play the guitar works for and against me. I have to unlearn some things as I learn new ones. The guitarist can cross-pick the strings, striking notes on the downstroke as well as the up. The claw hammer player strikes notes with the nail of the middle finger on the downstroke only. Are you taking notes, John? <laughs> <laughs> but what gives the style its body and ring is what happens on the alternate strokes. The thumb pulls off the high G string. The string is pegged halfway up the banjo's neck. The combination of notes of pull, uh, of pull offs, uh, notes and pull-offs creates what's called the bum diddy effect. Say it three times fast and you hear the banjo sound well enough. Oh wait. Night after night I sit in front of Ken Burns, breathing through my mouth, forcing the muscle memory into my right hand. War is hell, especially with the banjo in your lap. Bum diddy, bum diddy, D day, bum diddy, bum diddy, Normandy, bum diddy, bum diddy, Pearl Harbor, bum diddy, bum diddy, Uwajima. With the TV certain sound turned down, it's hard to tell if the GIs are running for the Japanese or me. Unless you're eight years old, it's absolutely no fun to be a beginner at anything. 
Compared to playing the guitar, I feel like I'm wearing a propeller beanie. <laughs> Desperate, I click into Amazon and order an instruction book, and then, like Michael landed on Little House, stand in the front yard, squint into the horizon, and look at the rising dust of the book we ran. The book arrives just in time. Having survived the war with my right hand intact, I'm ready to play a tune. I feel, I'm feeling cocky, but I hit the skids when the book tells me to expect to take an entire week to master a song. Then, as if to rub my disbelieving face in it, the first song offered is Skip to my loop. <laughs> this must be the point where most people quit. <laughs> a week to learn Skip to my loop is like being told it'll take a week to learn how to make ice. <laughs> I master it in eight days. <laughs> Like the shell-shocked soldiers in France, my family is showing signs of serious psychological illness, <laughs> even before the book arrives. Two weeks of uninterrupted right-hand open-string bum ditty have taken a toll. At the moment I get a second wind, my left hand finally getting some action. Peggy, Maggie, and Riley have crumbled into a constant state of agitation. Maggie has developed a tick. Peggy appears in the basement a couple nights into my graduate work on Skip to the Loop. <laughs> Forget the banjo, she says. I'm going to stomp on your face. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of gentle support that makes all the hours of practice worthwhile. <laughs> and so I persist. Learning an instrument is an easy thing to quantify when you do the math. $350 for a banjo, plus $20 for an instruction book, plus $50 for a case, plus 100 hours of practice, equals one performable version of old Joe Clark. <laughs> Since that song only lasts three minutes, eight if you're jamming with hippies. <laughs> time for three minutes of music. The answer is as elusive as the definition of art itself. And at this stage of the game, I can only think of one explanation. Like a baby speaking her first words, the banjo gives back to its caretaker, even as it frazzles the nerves of an entire household. Oh. Wow.